Hi, everybody, and thank you so much for being with us here at the International Institute for Gene of Genealogical Studies. Our goal at the International Institute of Genealogical Studies is to help you become a professional genealogist, to help you know which courses you want to take, maybe what certificates that you want to earn, so that you have the opportunity of uh, getting a great um, education, and that education can help you in any way that you want. Right now, what our goal is, is to show you how to use the new website and also to show you some of the new features that have released since August 15th when we did our last orientation. And if you need any help um, joining to get your courses, get your certification, um, there is a chat app right in the bottom of every page on the website. So I'm going to show you our um, website now. Um, if you need to know, I'm Angie Breidenbach. I am the executive director. And with me today as my co-host is Cheryl Levy, our um, Canadian professor. She's one of two and then uh, that are Canadian specialists. And then we also have quite a few of our current students and some future students with us today. So thank you for being with us. So I'm going to take us to the home page. I have logged in already as, um, as a student uh, so that you can see what you would see versus what I would see. All right. So when you come to genealogicalstudies.com, you are going to be able to see our home page. You'll be able to see all of the different opportunities that are available. And then um, you can see the different course certificate options that are available as well. And in these certificate options, you can break them down into a variety of um, a, a variety of different um, levels. Sorry, <laughs> guess I need more coffee today. So, in the different levels, you have the American Basic, and this is just an example because every one of them are like that. And in these basic levels or the intermediate, if you choose to switch into that, um, we're just gonna kind of pop through a few so you can see. You can see that if you scroll down a little, you can make sure and catch every one of the uh, different uh, courses that are in that particular level. And you can purchase them individually, which is fine, or you can bulk buy. This is an important option because if you want to purchase an entire certificate. If you do three to five courses, there is a bulk discount of about $4 per course. But in I'm speaking in US dollar, you can purchase in your own currency, not a problem. It will need you to log in and give your um, address because of course you're becoming a student then. And it it's a free account to have. That free account allows you to then verify your country and your currency. And that country and currency can become important because all of the, the prices I'm going to tell you today are going to be by U.S. dollar. Uh, we are um, an international uh, vocational education um, school. And, and so when you graduate from here, you have a vocational trade school certificate, and that is international. However, we are based in the US now, and I particularly am based in Montana. And so by being based in Montana, um, that means that everything will, the original price is US dollar, but your currency works. So if you wanted to bulk buy these courses, three to five courses gets you $4 off per course, six courses and up gets you $7 US off per course. And so you can keep adding into your um, cart and you can see that the discount is automatic. So if we add these courses to our cart and then um, let's say we wanna add some more, you can go right up here to courses um, or you can go back to the previous um, screens and then you can add the remaining courses. And what this does for you is, um, now I'm hoping that this will work because I just said this, um, and then you can um, add the courses and then you can go up and you can check your cart. So if you wanted to bulk buy all of the courses, you can proceed to check out. You still have not purchased. There's no fear there. 
and it will show you what the discounts are all the way down the row. It allows you to pay in any of the um, different credit cards that you want to pay. And it, we use Shopify and in Shopify, they offer a payment installment opportunity that does not go through the school. If you need a larger payment plan and uh, to be able to fit you through the entire program, um, then just give me a call, 800-580-0165. I'm at extension one, the number's everywhere on, so don't worry. And you can also pop into the chat app. And on that chat app, um, you have the opportunity to um, connect with me as well. And we make an appointment and we set up um, a unique payment plan for you. And then you can save information and pay. So that's an important change that we have had since the last um, iteration of pre-features. Pre okay, so um, once you go in and you've got your courses, you're gonna be able to go to my briefcase, my courses, and in this area is where you're gonna find any of your current courses. If you don't have any current courses, you're going to go over here to your drop down arrow. Your past and future courses are going to be under grades. Okay. And then um, obviously, this is Zelda Z, and she hasn't got any courses yet. So, um, what she can do, because she doesn't have any yet, she's interested in the school, but she's created her account. She can go in, she can read the course announcements, she can go in and uh, look at any of the videos that are in here to see what she's interested in. And uh, she's welcome to join in um, as she decides what certification program she's going for. So this is a very nice feature. Under the, um, your a lot of people are wondering where's their previous course purchases. Right now we're working on the certification issuance. The new feature coming for our uh, certification issuance used to be that you had a paper issued to you for every single lesser certificate, a basic, an intermediate, an advanced, and then you would get your complete for that level. And then once you've got your 40 courses for your PLCGS, which is your professional learning certificate in genealogical studies, that is a post-nominal and it's your credentials. So once you get that, um, you actually will get a paper graduation certificate. It started to be a little bit cumbersome for everyone to have all of this paper when really the one that mattered was a graduation certificate. You will get a graduation certificate for a couple of different um, programs. The first is any uh, 40 course or above um, that has included your uh, country records, your methodology, and your electives so that it fills out the program. Those all include your um, PLCGS post-nominal credentials. Those credentials are important because they do help you to verify to your clients or to the companies that you want to work for that you are a professional genealogist and you've had the appropriate education. But additionally, they come in handy for some of the um, repositories and archives that you wanna to go to where they don't just let the general public get into some of those um, records groups. Uh, professional genealogists with her credentials will be able to do that. We have coming in the future the opportunity to have a credential wallet card. That's not out yet, but it's coming. And that will be able to prove to your clients, but also to these archives that you are a professional genealogist and where you got your international education from. So it's very, very helpful when you're talking to other experts. Um, another thing that we'll do then is you will get digital versions. And I love this. This is what we're working on this month. And so it will be out very soon, probably in the next um, one to two months or less. And that means that you'll have the opportunity to put those digital certificates on your website, your social media, and you'll be able to add them to anything, uh, email that you want to send to a client or potentially you're applying for a company. Maybe you want to work for a private eye. 
maybe you want to work for um, law enforcement or you want to work for the courts. Maybe you want to repatriate fallen soldiers or help solve cold cases. You'll be able to put those credentials into emails and on your website and any other social media. So I'm super excited to give you that opportunity. And then, of course, your credential card will show that when you go to meet in person. So those are things I'm very excited about. Um, the uh, additional things for that will get your PLCGS. I want to make sure you're aware of what gets you PLCGS or what gets you the silver medallion, which allows you to prove that you are a professional genealogist. So the silver medallion certification and the credentials come with those 40 course and up fully finished um, country records groups with the methodology uh, record with the methodology courses. And they also come with your electives. So you put all those together and you get your PLCGS. But in addition, you can get a PLCGS if you take the librarianship program. The librarianship program is open to anyone that is a working librarian, a graduate librarian that has a um, bachelor's uh, or an associate's. And it's also open to those who are working docents and um, that are running specific genealogy programs within their genealogy societies. So that is a program. If we see somebody register for that before we activate those courses, before anything happens, we're going to make sure and talk to you so that you understand what those courses are and you feel really confident those are the ones that you want to take. Okay. So in addition to um, the, that gets you your PLCGS. Now, in addition to that, we have one other program, which is the DNA and Genetic Genealogy Program. This one is super popular right now, of course. And what's helpful is that there are a lot of people taking that program to understand DNA better. That's fine. But when you graduate that 15 course program, though you don't earn the PLCGS without the full 40 course, you do earn your DNA and Genetic um, Genealogy certificate, which does come with the silver graduation foil and the credentials to show that you have earned your genetic genealogy certificate. Very important because if you're helping to do research in solving cold cases, if you're rebuilding a family or a descendancy tree, helping an attorney discover who the proper um, heirs are doing heir tracing, if you're assisting in any way, um, to try to solve who a Jane or a John Doe is, or repatriating a soldier, you need that particular 15 course. Why would you then continue on to your PLCGS? It's going to be uh, because you're going to need even more information as your career grows in order to um, help people build those full family trees with the research um, that is needed. And sometimes you cross borders. That happens a lot from United States, Canada, back into the UK, Ireland, um, Australia, Caribbean. There's so much. So it's really important that you're aware that you can start working as a professional genealogist with your genetic and DNA um, certificate, but that you also want to continue once you are working. So uh, we have a wonderful uh, interview on our YouTube channel, which you can find uh, on YouTube at Genealogical Studies is our handle. You can also find it on our website under Community tab, and I'll show you that now. And this gives you the opportunity to um, find all of our um, social media and other options. So here's the Community tab. We're on the dashboard. So we went from home, and I'm just going to kind of take you through real quick um, to dashboard which is where you'll find the latest announcements. You'll find the um, calendar. You can change forward and backward in this calendar. And you can go into any of the other. So for instance, you want to look on October 17th. And we know that uh, Cheryl Levy, who's here with us today, has done a video teaching internet tools in a virtual meeting. And you can see the YouTube video right here. You can click it and go from there. So that's lovely. Um, we have other types of videos that may or may not be in the calendar, and it may be because they're particularly proprietary to a uh, course, but this one is a general um, discussion, and it helps you. This is Brenda Wheeler. She's our Australian and English professor. She also does analysis and skills um, 
mentoring and consulting. And she is um, our Latin professor. And she is working on a new course that I'm very excited to announce will come out next year. Um, it is called Latin for Genealogy. And you'll have the opportunity to understand um, a lot of the older documents because of the work that Brenda is doing. And then we are also including our other professors in this same course coming out that includes our um, Scottish, our Irish and our Canadian and um, those those instructors are all joining forces. And then we also have an Italian um, professor who Melanie Holtz, who's going to be adding a significant amount of information for the varieties of Italian um, Latin documents that you'll find. So there's a lot there. Uh, so you can go back and you can look through. Um, there was um, an Italian meeting that you can go kind of do a little preview, which is really nice if you're interested in the Italian records. So this is important. We go from the dashboard, we've shown you my briefcase and my courses where you're gonna find your current courses only. So this is how you're going to join um, a course that's in progress. Um, to go over to your FAQs, this is gonna give you a lot of information. I go through here now and again and update information in here in case something has changed, but it has, this particular page has not been updated since August 15th. So it'll be important for you to um, to know that I, I'm continuously updating that, but it, it doesn't have to get updated as often as everything else. Um, we do have a contact page, which is wonderful. And you can see who everybody is, what their job duties are within our um, organization. And you can see where they live and the hours they generally work. We'll do a little switch up on here. We had just a little bit of change. Angie Lynn Rodesky, She's our director of student advising. She has just gone full time. And that means that she's going to work. Um, she's going to take Tuesdays and Thursdays off, but she'll be working on Saturday and Sunday to help those students who are international or who cannot uh, get their information done during the week. We'll have somebody available for you now on the weekend, which is good. Um, so there's a lot of different information here that you can find. There is a contact form. And it'll fill in a whole bunch of information for you. My suggestion is that is your least likely way of getting the best help. Why do I say that? Down here in the bottom corner, you're going to find our chat app. This chat app is real time. What we do with anything that comes in is it's first come, first served. And we're very personal with that, meaning we take time with you before we move to the next person. If we're going to be a while, we try to pop in a note that says, hey, I'm going to, you know, I'm working with another student. I'll be with you soon. But this chat app is fabulous and um, you can it will respond to you. So if you say, hi, I'm here, it's going to tell you um, uh, we need your name. Right. So it's going to come back and it's going to ask you to give us your name, your information all of that. And the reason that we want that is not because we do not sell your information. This gives us a chance to look up your account. And um, internationally, please be aware, there's probably 40 different people with your same name. So if you give us a phone number or email, now we can find the right account. So just appreciating that. Um, and I'm just going to tell Angie Lynn, because I know she's watching. Uh -huh. Um, that way she doesn't think she has to answer that. <laughs> and we are really live. Okay. So what, here's where you can find our phone number and here's where you can find the extensions to call someone at. Why don't these people have extensions? Because they will reach out to you by Skype, email, or by, um, Zoom, and it'll be done at a predetermined appointment. You can make appointments with the rest of us, and I strongly advise it if you have something like you're trying to do a payment plan or you're trying to um, get advising on your particular um, plan for your life. Um, those take a little bit longer. And and look at this. Is she's, uh, she's responding all the time. <laughs> and so that's, that's really great. Um, anyway. 
From there, you can go um, where you can see your cart. We are going to move a new button here that is going to take you directly to the store, but have a drop down to the cart or something like that very soon. And the reason that we're doing that is we have more products on our store now than on um, than what we had at only courses. And I'll open up the store and show you that too in a minute. So if, again, back to community. With this little drop down arrow, we made them bigger so that you could see them better. This will take you to our blog. Um, this will take you to um, Genealogy Wise, which is being rebranded as Genealogy Social. If you are a student and we do check, then you can join our student only Facebook group. If you're not a student or you're just thinking about a student, I'm terribly sorry, you cannot join. The reason is that we talk about homework here. We talk about announcements here. We talk about things that people uh, need within their courses. And so we, we don't let people who are not students join. Also, if you want to, you can go in there and find someone else that maybe wants to study with you in the same course. That's totally okay. But you have to be a student first. Thank you for understanding that. So on our social, we do have a Facebook page that is outward. And we try to put some announcements and things on there. But it's not our number one place to be. Our number one place to be is genealogicalstudies.com, where you can see the dashboard, all the announcements, everything that's going on. We have uh, Twitter, which is, I'm going to have to change this to say X, evidently. And we have our YouTube. I'm going to open this in a new window so that I can show you the um, YouTube channel um, on here. This is the, in, the interview I told you about for, um, this is um, Christina Moffat, and she did an interview on how she graduated with her DNA and genetic genealogy certificate and was immediately hired as a um, part-time professional. And she's worked there now about six months, about um, four to five months in. They loved her work so much. She was so knowledgeable from her education that they offered her a promotion and more hours, which we're very excited to say she got. And so she tells us about her story and her journey and how um, it's, it's an extremely poignant and beautiful um, interview for, uh, not because I did it, but because of hearing Christina's story and what she's able to do for the families of fallen soldiers and uh, bring them back home for burial. Um, families, I did not know this, have the opportunity to choose whether they want to leave them buried where they are or bring them home. That was a wonderful piece and there's more information than that in that video. So I think it is fantastic if you would like to um, watch that. We do have additional videos. There's actually quite a few. Some are timely. Um, I do jobs in genealogy, how to become a professional genealogist, intro to writing. I um, personally um, am a, um, a specialist or a professor in um, professional development in genealogy in, uh, I can help you with methodology and all those things, but I tend to send you to the other experts for the country records or methodologies because that allows me to focus on running the school as well as um, running the professional development program and uh, writing and teaching in that manner. So there's a few things that I teach very specifically and I do videos on very specifically as the executive director. When I teach, expect a fire hose. I will teach fast and we will go through a lot. There is other teachers who have a different pace. Mine is, is fast delivery and getting you as much information I can in the time that I have, but I will spend the time to answer your questions too. So that's just, a, I think there's different um, personalities and personality traits. And I think that's an important thing that you are aware of. So let's go back to, um, here we are, we've gone all the way across these. Now we're gonna get over into this side of the um, board. We've gone all, sorry, I'm gonna share screen again. Can I interrupt for a moment, um, Angie? Mm -hmm. um, because it's a question about registering for courses. She says, uh, Jill says, how can I register for courses that I have already purchased? Okay, we'll get to that, one moment. Okay. Um, well, well, let's go ahead and do it now. Um, the way to register for this is going to be coming up in the very near future, but um, it's important for us to share with you 
that we are working on the certification program first and that we are working on the um, past purchases next. And those are the last two things that we're working on from the old website. So um, bringing over the past purchases means that um, you'll see those under your drop down box here and then you'll see them under grades. Um, the important thing about this, where you'll see them loading, hopefully this will switch over here for you. You'll see all your courses, your grades, your dates. Um, it's important that once you see your courses, your grades and your dates, anything that's in the future, you'll be able to, you can change those dates now. And, um, but I'm gonna stop here for a second so I can maybe load something for Zelda or show some courses and grades. Um, I cannot because I'm in the wrong phase. All right, so um, it's you will see the future dates here that you can change the dates. Um, once you do that, uh, desktop two. Um, in in order to see those, uh, you have to have courses, obviously, and I did not load any for Zelda. My apologies, but um, inside this, you will see this area that has future dates. What you'll have happening in your past dates is they're going to load in here as well, and you'll be able to activate them in this particular area. And again, it's under, it's by your gray profile icon, and then you'll click on grades. Um, you can go into any of these different areas for you, but the next question that came was, how do I change, um, I'm going to talk to you about that in a second. How do I change my time? Um, so your time zone is right here. And if you click on it, this is uh, how they loaded it. We did not choose these names. So if you particularly live in, say, Toronto, Canada, you're going to look for um, America, Toronto. But as you can see, what they're trying to do is go by continent and then they go by major city um, after the continent. Um, so that's how you're gonna choose your time zone. And once you choose that time zone, so for instance, let's say you are in Toronto, you're gonna go to America, yep, 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 Toronto. And the reason Toronto versus New York, for those of you who aren't aware, the time changes differently in Canada and different, um, provinces than it does in the United States and the different states. Um, <clears throat> there are a few states that actually change or don't change at different times. And so that's why you go to the nearest big city. So if you change this, then you're going to scroll way down and you're going to click update profile. But you're going to want to also open up your optional and you're gonna add your mobile phone and your address here. You can add a landline here as well. None of this is visible to anybody. And I promise you, we do not sell this. This is solely for admin purposes so that we can send you your information. We can contact you if you're having trouble with a class, you can make an appointment and we can get hold of you. Um, so then you, the other thing down here, this other fields, this is where you're gonna put in the PLCGS. Uh, notice you cannot do it. This happens when we award the postnominal. You'll get a letter telling you how to use it, and it'll come with your graduation certificate. Right here, I want to. I saved it by scrolling to the bottom. Right here, this is really important. Um, if you decide you want to use the Moodle app, the Moodle app is an orange app that is available. <clears throat> I have lots of apps on here. I'm going to stop screen for a second. <clears throat> Sorry, so that I can share my phone screen. Um, it is that orange M with a hat. Uh, it's fine. You can use it. It's not ours. It belongs to Moodle, which is the learning management platform that we're using. On Moodle, the it'll only allow you on this app. You can download it using that QR code or you can download it through your store on your app store on your phone. But if you're using that app, it'll only allow you to work with one to two classes at a time. It will give you announcements, um, but it won't do uh, as much as the website will.
My suggestion is only use it if you're traveling. Um, personally, if you have your laptop, a desktop, or if you have a um, if you have a different kind of um, tablet, iPad, something like that, you're going to want to use it um, that way to have your your website access and do all of the functionality through the website is much better, to be honest. Someday we might be able to do an app of our own, but the uh, cost of that is so extraordinary that we don't really want to uh, access that right now. We want to keep your costs down as low as possible. Um, <clears throat> so if you've changed your time zones, I'm going to pop you back over here to the dashboard. Am I sharing my screen? I am not again. Sorry. Here we go. This is real people in real life, obviously. <laughs> so I was talking about this um, mobile app right here. Um, and this is where you get the QR code. And I showed you the orange M with the hat on it. Okay. So um, <clears throat> this here is what's important to you if you want to do the app on your phone. Again, uh, the website itself does not work very well on your phone. It's got really long, thin lines. We'll see what we can do about that into the future. But currently, my suggestion is use your tablet or your laptop or your desktop. Um, there's one other thing I want to show you in your profile, and that is your first name, last name, your email, and then um, this, you can keep your email hidden, which is what I do for you all. Um, you can make it visible. I don't think that's safe because uh, the general public could get hold of it. And I, I don't want you to have that happen. So my suggestion is keep it hidden. Um, then you can put your city and town here if you would like. Um, I think that it it's whatever you choose can be there. And then um, definitely collect, uh, put in your, comp your, I should put in Ontario, shouldn't I? Um, definitely put in your country if you're in, you know, a different country, because that again helps anybody who's trying to connect with you. Maybe they want to do a, um, a study group, or maybe they want to share and collaborate on genealogy. They know what country they're trying to connect with you in. And then make sure your time zone is set to where you live. Again, I live in Missoula, Montana, but I don't necessarily... Uh, maybe you don't want everybody in the world to know that. So maybe you put your state, you know, but if you're comfortable with your city and, and state being out there, do that. But please do put your country be and your time zone. Okay, so we're going to update our profile way down here. And um, you're going to go back over to the dashboard. And you're going to see now that where this one that we're on today had previously shown noon, it now shows two. So it's gonna show in your own time zone. And that's important for all of these. And when you're in a course, it's also important because if you're booking uh, an appointment in analysis and skills one, two, and three, and also in lecturing, you need to make sure that you see those um, times that the appointments are available. And I'm going to refer you to the those courses to, to look for that in the future or attend one of the analysis and skills meetings that you'll find on your calendar. Um, there was just one yesterday. And so if you're interested in the analysis and skills courses, I'm going to tell you two things. First, make sure you take your courses in order. So for instance, to get an analysis and skills one, you should have taken methodology one, methodology two, uh, electronic using the internet and skills transcribing. The, they're listed as ME for methodology dash 101, 102, 103, 104. And they have the course name after it. Analysis and Skills 1 is listed as ME-105-2023. An important note about that is that we changed the course in January of 17th of 2023 because it used to be a year long and now it is 26 weeks long. The reason we changed it was it was originally um, intended to be a uh, course that you took um, by mail because the school is, is 25 years old. We'll actually, we'll have our 25th um, anniversary party um, in coming up in another year. 
but um, <clears throat> it was done by mail before the website started and it never changed, which wasn't conducive for students who are now online and all this technology. So we moved it to a 26 week course. We updated all the coursework and the logical flow of the courses so that the questions follow in a logical pattern. And then we additionally, um, there's two weeks in between uh, for two different times. Those reasons are you do the first half of the course and you watch the video meetings or you go to a live meeting. Then you turn in all of your homework and you give two weeks to the professor to read that homework, which is crucial because you guys are turning in a lot of homework for that class. And then you meet with that person for 20 minutes. They go over your homework with you and they give you tips on that, how to improve and what you expect in the next half of the course. You do the next half of the course the same way. Watch any meetings, including the, um, the meetings that have to do with our scholarly articles. So we have special articles that we've chosen. We're gonna teach you how to read those and analyze those because you're gonna gain so much skill and information out of them. And then you'll understand how to read genealogical journals, which is great for you as a professional. Then you'll get you'll ask for the next appointment. You'll wait two weeks for that professor to read those appointments and read those homework. And then you'll meet with them again. And after that, you'll be awarded your marks. So it is very important that we give you a little extra time in those uh, courses so that you have the two week time and so that you can mesh your schedule with a professor's schedule. We have professors in um, most continents, not all, but the two that are most involved with this particular analysis and skills one, two, and three are Cheryl Levy, who's with us today, and you've seen her, and Brenda uh, Wheeler, who is in Australia. So it kind of covers opposite sides of the time zones and world. So if you need a morning appointment or an afternoon or an evening appointment, you're bound to find one. It's just a matter of making sure that you give them two weeks to read because there's hundreds of students that they're reading in that two week period of time. And we hope that you don't mind and understand that. So that's why we changed those courses and updated it to uh, suit you a little bit better. Okay, these are announcements here that um, this is the one where I made the notes and they're on your dashboard. And we also put these often, not every time, but often in the Facebook group, just to try to catch as many people as we can. But this is site-wide and you can um, subscribe to it. So it's very important that if you wanna get the announcements, you can do it two ways. Uh, one is to subscribe, the other is to read them on here. And then there is a third option. And I think this is gonna be very important to you to keep your inbox from being overflowing, right? If it were me, I would go to preferences and then you can look through all these different things. But if you go to your notification preferences, you can turn on and off all of the different notifications that come in. It's important to note that web means you'll get all your notifications when you're on the website. They're not going to announce to you. They're not going to go to your email or your, your, uh, your phone, your, nothing. They're only gonna be on here. If they're on web, you're going to find them under this bell. Email means all this stuff is going to land in your inbox. If it were me, I would go through, and I did, <laughs> choose the ones that it's crucial for you to know and choose the ones that you can watch on the bell. My, my suggestion, mobile means the mobile app. I've done this a couple different ways. I have all of them turned on for web. I have most turned off for email unless it's crucial. Um, and I would say um, something that might be crucial to me might be, I wanna know about a scheduling. Um, so there's a scheduler here. I would want that in my email, right? And then there's other things like if you want a, a login notification. Personally, I don't think you need it. And uh, because you can get that also here and you're not filling up your inbox. But mobile, if you wanna have, you might wanna maybe turn off a couple, but you could always check the app if you do have the app on um, for anything. My personal preference on almost everything is to leave it on web and check here. 
But that's only if you'll promise me that you'll actually check your notifications, because if we're trying to reach you, it's really hard to reach you if you've turned off uh, notifications from us. That's And if you have a course that's closing and we're trying to help you, it, it's a little bit of a problem. So this, again, I'm going to show you drop down arrow by your profile icon. Very important spot because you're going to find all sorts of stuff here. And that if you need accessibility, I'm going to talk about that here in a second. You can change your profile here. But when you go to profile, remember you have to edit profile on this blue button on the left, okay? And you can see what you can see here. Um, and this does, it. you can choose to have it not show, okay? Um, that's an old um, publishing email that I use. <laughs> so um, your grades will show up by clicking grades. Sadly, I didn't give Zelda any uh, to show you today. And then um, the calendar should take you right back uh, to the dashboard calendar. But notice that it does not show the announcements unless you're in dashboard. And then um, you can upload private files that have to do with your coursework or your thoughts or blogs, things like that. Um, and then remember preferences. So now that we've kind of gone over that, I think um, I... I think I've covered almost everything. Cheryl, have I missed anything? Let's see. We'll we'll take a look through. Um, I think we're okay. We did the time zones. Good. Um, and then if you need any help, again, remember that chat app is on the bottom right-hand corner of every web page. And um, if you need to retake a course, um, there is a 50% charge to retake a course. Let me explain that a little bit. Uh, we are the most flexible school that exists, and I'm really excited about that. What that means is that if you want to purchase an entire package, you can do that. You can do it in full payment. You can do it in um, payment plan. You can use shop to do partial payments. You can do it to fit your budget, whether or not you want to buy just a section of courses or one course to try it out. We're here to help you with any of that we meet your budget where you stand and that is good. Now, um, from there, if you incomplete a course, you're going to see that we have a grace period. So we have an unofficial slogan, which is really pretty official, that we have grace and mercy for adults who are adulting. What does that mean? That means that if you got sick, if you uh, had to go take care of somebody, if you needed a pause, something was just not going right, or you were having a massive, wonderful, round the world vacation, then you need a pause on your studies, that's okay. I had to take several pauses because um, as you know, or if maybe you don't, I'm a, an author and I write books, which means that I have to meet deadlines. So I ended up taking three or four different pauses. I wrote six books while I was going to school here to get my graduation certificate. I did graduate from here before I became the executive director. And you can see some of my books behind me. Um, so the, the reason for those pauses was to allow me to meet deadline. Nothing wrong with that. If you need a break, no questions asked, we'll happily be able to move your courses, give you a break. If you're in a course, we can extend the date, no problem. If you are two weeks past the course, this is when you, if you're at 14 days past up to that date, we will move that course at no questions asked. We're happy to do it for you for that grace and mercy. We wanna help you succeed. If for some reason you um, haven't uh, finished the course, and you've called in or you've messaged in or emailed or whatever you did, you're going to have to do 15 days past the course. There's a 50% uh, fee to re-register, but that re-registration fee is only for that one course. We don't make you pay for the whole program. We don't make you um, remove yourself from the program. We just let you continue on. So it's 50% for one course that you've incompleted. Um, if you incomplete 10 in a row for some really weird reason, talk to me. Okay, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, thank you, Madeline. She says, I have to attest to the grace periods. Angie's the most understanding and helpful person in the world. Thanks, Angie. Wow, thank you. <laughs> can I use that? <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, we have some pretty... Uh, pretty amazing people that um, are our staff. And I would say every one of them has a lot of grace and mercy. 
Um, if we're hearing the same thing from you three, four, five times, we're going to be calling you on it. Not because we're trying to be mean, but we're trying to help you succeed. So we might be like, why have you moved this one course five times? You know, we'll be asking you that again, not to be mean, but to, to hold you accountable to your goals. You're the one setting your goals with us. We want to help you reach them. Um, our goal is to put together the uh, most amount of genealogists in the world to protect and provide um, history to future generations. So please help us do that by helping you become a professional genealogist. If there are no other questions, um, and if you do need help, chat app or a phone call, and we will return those messages immediately. And Madeline says, mental health matters. Yes, it does. Um, so we will do our very best um, to return those calls immediately, to return those chats immediately. But like I said, we take them one at a time uh, and we work with you personally. So sometimes it does take us uh, anywhere from five minutes to a day or two to get back. It's not because we're trying to delay you or ignore you. It is only because we are working so hard to be very personal and connected to each student that needs us and to answer the questions. And um, as human beings, we also sometimes need to take a day off um, or have a vacation. If that's the case, we'll do our best to get back to you and say the person who needs to answer that question is on vacation or they're on a day off, they will um, respond to you as soon as they can when they get back. And then if you would give us a little grace and mercy, understanding that sometimes uh, we have a long line um, to respond to, but we do respond. If you haven't heard from us in two to three days, it's okay to put a, a note in the chat app and nudge us. And that way we know if we've missed something, but you should have heard back with us um, usually same day, sometimes a couple of days. I personally, I'm going to tell you my schedule right now, just because it comes into play a lot being the executive director. I work Monday through Friday. I try to take Saturdays and Sundays off now. That's new, um, kind of unheard of, but um, I'm hoping to be able to uh, do that again, as Madeline mentioned, for mental health. And I think that's an important part of um, life. I did just get asked in the um, in the questions, um, the where is genealogy store? Um, and it is uh, it is under the cart. It'll take you to all of the um, it'll take you to all of the courses. But we're going to be adding. Um, this is brand new. I'm really excited to show you. Um, I worked really hard on this with a couple of our staff this last week and you can go to genealogy store direct now and you can um, go through and you can buy one by one but even if you add one by one it's still going to recognize the discounts in your cart but in addition to that this goes straight through to the uh, school side genealogicalstudies.com you can buy your courses on there um, we're going to be adding genealogy store tab to the um, school itself. And then uh, you will, right now, it just goes to cart here, but you're gonna see it um, go to genealogystore.com here. And you can, again, find your cart right over here. No problem. So um, we'll put the genealogystore.com tab here. That will probably happen within the next week so that it's easier to go to. But if I may show it off, um, genealogystore.com. We've done a reverse of the color logos here. Um, you can change over here the currency that you would like to look at your pricing in. I think that's helpful to people internationally. Um, and then right now you're on the, um, the basically the home page. And right here, I did a video about how to become a professional genealogist. On the side, these three dashes here allow you to change around and see different things. This will bring you right back to genealogicalstudies.com so that you can continue on with your course wherever you left off. And if you wanna see all the different products, you've got your different certifications. Um, we are working on, as you can see over here, they all have a beautiful image. Um, we have an amazing um, designer, her name is Jenneth. Um, and she is working on our other ver uh, visual 
versions. So not every single one of them has their um, pictures up yet, but they do have a nice, lovely background. But you can see we're working on getting those um, photos up for you. Uh, we're doing them as quickly as we can. She does them in batches, which is lovely. Um, but as we go through, you can see each one that's in the different um, record groups, and you can choose your elective courses here. If you have elective courses that are in your package and they have been a previous purchase, right now you simply need to um, drop a note in the chat app and either Angie Lynn Rodeski or myself, Angie Breidenbach, will help you get a course enrolled that's already been pre-purchased. So please do not go up and try to purchase it again here in courses. This is where you're, if you're buying new courses, okay? Um, in the certification overview, I've been working hard to get them up to show people. Um, I'll probably add a buy button here to make it even easier uh, so that you can add all 14 at once of methodology. But it shows you the numbers, the code for the course and the name of the course and what level it's in. So hopefully that'll help you. We'll get this to be a, a little bit um, easier to buy directly from this page. But honestly, uh, you can do it over here in the course page or from the home page. If you're looking for one course, you can search for that one name. But for instance, if you were to go into Canadian records right here, before you've popped in to look at any of these courses, you can book by all 16 of them. And then one other thing I'll note is that we've gone through, we were asked very specifically by some other um, education uh, and uh, different entities that were wanting to do continuing education with us uh, to put on the descriptions here and what the contact hours are. Contact hours mean how many hours the students should expect to work on that course before they complete it. And then what their grading scales are. Some of these can get quite long, but uh, we, we've been working on that to be able to answer that for the other entities that are sending us their uh, employees for continuing education. I'm gonna stop share for a moment and just look at our chat app. Um, is, Cheryl, do we have anything else we need to take a look at? Do you use the search feature to find other items such as books? Um, you definitely can in the store, uh, but we'll put that link on the website here within the next week. The search bar does not work to find the books in just on the site, but when you're in your course, uh, we did have, we added a tab that allows you to see what other course uh, books are needed. And in the store, we're working on making sure if you were to buy the entire program and we're working on this to add, what are the compulsory books that you need? So for instance, if you're in paleography, you can download the paleography course material for free inside the course. That's the way all of our courses work, but the workbook has to be purchased. And so that's something that's a compulsory book. Uh, if you're in AS1, 2, and 3, um, you'll need to buy um, two to three books to be able to complete those courses. And those um, we're making sure all of those compulsory books are listed on the, uh, on the certificate areas. And we'll try to list them also in the descriptions. They're not fully listed on the outward face. They definitely are listed on the inward face. If for some reason you have to wait I don't know whether, I don't know, it doesn't happen that often, but sometimes there's a back order or sometimes there's international shipping. We'll be happy to extend that course for you to give you the time to read your coursework, do your homework and get the book and read that too. So don't ever worry if a course is eight weeks long and you're still waiting for um, a, a book to arrive, we'll just extend it for you. It's That's the grace part, no worries. Um, let's see. Bruce, you've used it to find things other than courses and thought it might help others. Yes, I agree. Um, we'll we'll work on that. There's a few little things that uh, it's really nice to get your all feedback. Um, so then from there, uh, I think we're done with um, just showing how the courses work. Um, and then if you would like to see some more, we're going to be recording uh, how to add your, your uh, assignments there's public assignments, there's private assignments, and there's assignments that require uploads. We're going to do some short videos, Cheryl and I, tomorrow, and we'll add those within the week into the new orientation course. 
once you get into and have an account, you can drop a note in the chat box uh, and the chat app and ask us to add you to the orientation course for free and we will do that. So if there's uh, any other questions, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off recording. Thank you so much for being with us. We hope to that you would like to become a professional genealogist. You can find us at genealogicalstudies.com and you can find any of our other things such as our gift cards uh, for the holidays or for a special uh, event over at genealogystore.com. And this is a great way to show someone not only that you love them, but that you support their goals. So if you want to put that on your Christmas list or your um, anniversary present list, birthday list, uh, you can do that and you can send the, the person buying it for you to genealogystore.com and then you can choose any course you like and we will help make sure that those courses end up in your um, My Briefcase My Courses. If for some reason you have purchased a course and it hasn't ended up there, again, drop a note in the chat app and we'll get on that as quickly as possible. You can choose to open your course immediately, or you can choose to open it at a future date. And if you need to know any compulsory book or any information about that course in advance, you can also ask us in the chat app and we will go look that up for you and make sure you have it um, if it's not readily noticeable. All right, thank you so much for being with me today. My name is Angela Breidenbach. And I am the executive director for the International Institute of Genealogical Studies, where you can get your professional genealogical credentials. <laughs>